funny, why on earth would I need to update a video on how to drive a Tesla as well as all the settings? Shouldn't it all be the same? Well, that's the beauty with Tesla. They're always improving their software and making the car better. If you didn't know, at the end of every year, they release a huge software update with special features, apps, and a new user interface. This year, they updated it again. While most changes this year are minor, there are still a lot of differences with this new update. So that's what we're gonna go over today. If you guys are new here, welcome to the channel. I'm Everyday Chris, where I talk all things Tesla and tech. I take my Tesla on road trips and I also give my advice on how to use your new electric car. Make sure to subscribe, maybe leave some super thanks for some pizza, and let's get started. So this is gonna be a pretty intense video, so I'll make sure I leave chapters for all the sections. If you guys just want quick random tips, make sure to check out my quick tip playlist. Now, aside from the general stuff like getting your key and locking and unlocking your Tesla, in today's video, we're gonna go ahead and dive into the specifics in the menu. So let's dive into the menu. With Tesla's, they keep it real simple. The Model 3 and Ys have all the info located on this giant screen here. If you wanna know how to set up your phone as a key and Bluetooth, then check out my quick tips in the link above. Now the screen is really divided into three sections. We got one, two, and the bottom row, three. You have the right section, which defaults to your GPS map. A little fun fact, it uses Google Maps as the point of interest, but when you're actually navigating, it uses Tesla Maps. Now it's still mixed reviews on that, but I really prefer Google Maps, which is why I like to have my cell phone mount there. Whenever I go on road trips, just in case, because there have been so many times where the Tesla doesn't reroute me when there's an accident or a road closure, but Google Maps does immediately. You have a few icons at the top area, which we'll discuss in a second, as well as notifications and all that stuff on the side. Next, you have this area on the left, which shows you your car, as well as other various information. And at the bottom, you have this giant black bar, which is kind of like your home icons with customizable buttons as well. So let's dive into the settings first. The first thing people wanna know when they get into their Tesla is how do I change my settings like the steering wheel positioning, the mirrors, and all that fun stuff. So that's what we're gonna be talking about first. In order to access the settings, you have to press the car icon. Once you're there, you'll see driver profiles, home link or MyQ garage if you have one, notifications, Bluetooth and cell service or Wi-Fi. Now again, I have a video that talks about how to set up your phone as a key as well as create driver profiles. However, they did change it now where your driver profiles are linked to your email and now all these settings are saved in the cloud. So if you ever do drive another Tesla rental, you can just use those settings, which is really cool. At the top you have controls and this is where your general quick controls are like lights, mirrors, child lock, steering and all that. The cool thing is you don't really ever need to go into these settings to change them. Instead you can easily pull up the wipers by pressing the actual button and once it pops up cards show up for easy access. This is where you can also turn on the automatic high beams on or off by pressing the gear stock away from you. You'll know it's on with a little gray icon on the upper left hand corner. You can fold your mirrors and the cool thing is Tesla knows where you fold your mirrors and can automatically fold your mirrors for you when you reach that area. And this has come in clutch every time I get into my tight garage. Tesla recently added a new feature with their child lock where you can actually control which doors in the rears has the child lock feature. So you can actually choose both doors, left door, or even the right door. Only if you didn't know, once you're driving above five miles per hour, the open door buttons won't work so you won't accidentally open the door. If you're not moving, the door button will open the door and the car will automatically go into park if you're the driver, so be careful. This is also where you can open your glove box and I really recommend setting a pin so that you can protect whatever's in the glove box. The control setting is also where you control your mirrors. Once you change these mirror settings, it asks to save to the current profile that you're on. Tesla also added a cool mirror auto dim on or off feature, which helps you if you have tint and you wanna see the cars easier at night. The recording button is Tesla's onboard dash cam and once you click it, it will save the last 15 minutes of driving footage, but I'll go into detail later. Now, it's really cool is that when you create your profiles, you can choose to default a profile to easy entry. This makes it so you can get in and out of your Tesla easier. For me on easy entry, I make sure that my steering wheel is at its highest position 
and it's away from me so I can get in the car easier. You can adjust the steering with the left scroll wheel. And again, you do not have to have the easy entry profile enabled. You can easily disable it with the press of a button. You can also set a default profile so the car will always default to that profile if it detects two phones. And you can enable valet mode where it limits many things like not being able to open the frunk as well as limits the speed and a few other stuff. At the bottom, you can also adjust the brightness or keep it on auto. Or if you want, they also have night mode, but that's in another section. So moving on to pedals and steering. This is a real important one. If you're a new Tesla owner, I recommend chill acceleration. It makes it so the pedal isn't as touchy and it accelerates slower. But again, getting a Tesla means yeeting it, so go crazy and set it to standard. Steering mode is all about preference. But think of comfort as a Toyota Camry where the steering wheel moves easier. And all the way to BMW Sport mode where it takes a little bit more elbow grease to move the steering wheel. But number one, you get a sweet tricep workout. And number two, you get better handling at high speeds. Stopping mode makes it so when your motor slow down your car, you can choose to automatically apply the brakes when you come to a stop, which helps maximize the regenerative braking. Think of roll as a California stop sign roll where the car will just slightly roll forward when you let go of the brake pedal. Creep makes it so that you have to brake to stop the car. And when you let your foot off of the brake, the engine or the motors will allow the car to slowly move forward automatically which is honestly great for cold weather driving. Now a new feature Tesla has is this one. Apply brakes when regenerative braking is limited. If you didn't know, if you drive your car in cold weather and the batteries aren't warm, or if you charge to 100%, there's no room for your regenerative braking energy to go back into your battery. So your motors won't be able to slow down your car. It's a weird feeling because you'd have to use the brake pedals a lot more. However, now it knows this and it blends in the brakes and applies the brakes automatically for a more natural and smooth experience. Offer assist and slip start. I mean, I just did a video where I took this out to the snow, but offer assist helps to divert power to the front and rear tires equally. And slip start spins the wheels if you're ever stuck in snow or sand. Now the cool thing with Tesla is there are always easter eggs and different ways to do things. Like one funny one is under charging. You can open the charge port by pressing open charge port or simply use the right scroll wheel voice command and say open the butthole. But charging is super important because we always have to charge our Tesla. And if you're charging at home, there are certain periods of time where your rates are the highest. You can control the amps. I have it at 32 amps because it puts less stress on the battery and I'm in no rush to charge. But no studies have found that charging at 48 amps decreases battery health. You can also control how much percentage to charge the car. And I like to hover around 80 to 85%. The test will remember your charging location settings at this location. I have scheduled departure enabled where the car will charge by a certain time. However, if you charge at a mall or at work, you can just do immediate charging. Now, without getting into the nitty gritty, my most expensive rates are between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. This means under scheduled departure, I want to leave by 3 a.m. And under settings, you can precondition the car so it heats up the battery as well as the interior temperature and enable off-peak charging, which is by far the most unintuitive interface I've ever seen. I'm just going to tell you my settings so the car will stop charging by 3.45 p.m. and avoid charging at high rates. And again, you can switch to schedule charging where the car will start charging at a certain time. And at the bottom, it lists your supercharging sessions. If you also ever wanted to go to the charging screen instantly, simply press the battery icon in the middle. And to switch from percentage to miles on the fly, just press the percentage icon. When you are charging, it also tells you how much power you're using on the far left, how many kilowatts it took to fill up your car, what the amps are, as well as the volts. And again, you can switch it all to miles and it'll show you miles instead of watts, which is really cool. The next one is a fun one, autopilot. Now I may have different settings from you guys because I have the full self-driving package. However, it should be generally the same. If you have enhanced autopilot, it should be very similar as well. Honestly, just turn all the settings on for maximum effect. 
I mean, you're in the most technologically advanced car in the world, so you gotta enable all those settings. For me, I have navigate on autopilot on, where the car will change lanes, pass slow cars on the freeway, and enter and exit the freeway for you. I have it enabled on the start of every trip. My speed-based lane changes where the car will change lanes to pass slow cars is on mild because I found that average and Mad Max was really too crazy. Exit passing lanes means that after it changes lanes on say the far left lane, it will switch back to the middle lane you were just in. I also have require lane change confirmation set to yes because I just like that extra confirmation and safety when it wants to change lanes. You can also enable the full self-driving beta if you have it. And depending on how you want to, you can set a driver profile. In the past, a lot of people liked assertive because it felt more like a natural driver. However, it's still too crazy for me, so I set mine to chill. Traffic light and stop sign control will show traffic lights and stop signs and stop when necessary, even if you don't have full self-driving. Summon is how you can use the feature on your app to move the car forward or backwards. I found that under customize summon, these were the best settings when parking in a tight garage space. Now a super cool secret feature is to disable require continuous press and set it to no. This makes it so you don't need to hold the arrow on your phone to make the car forward or backwards. However, if you do set this to no, you unlock a super secret function where shortly after putting your car into park, if you press the park button quickly twice, you get these cool arrows that allows you to move the car forward or backwards when you exit the vehicle. If you purchase the home link, here is where you can also have the garage door automatically open or close itself when using Summon. Now this next feature, you'll learn as you own your Tesla, but Teslas and EV cars have something called Phantom Drain. It's where the car is just sitting there parked and draining battery. Things like the dash cam and cabin overheat protection decrease your battery life. But another thing that decreases your battery life is standby mode. I had standby mode on sometimes and I found it saved a few extra seconds of my life. So honestly, it's not worth keeping on as it does drain your car battery and park faster. Now this next feature is the cruise control set speeds. When you enable autopilot, you can choose for the car to use the current speed you're driving or use the cameras to see the speed signs and you can set it to that speed limit. But what's cool is you can set an offset so say you just got on the freeway and the speed limit is 65 miles per hour. You can customize the offset, but once you set the autopilot cruise control, it won't default to 65. But instead, for me in this case, with 8% offset, it will default to 70 miles per hour. And again, another Easter egg, while driving and on autopilot, you can easily change the speed to the current speed limit or based on your offset by simply pressing the speed sign. Also while driving, to control the cruise control distance, just press the right scroll wheel left and right. And if you always want rainbow mode enabled, you can enable that Easter egg under the toy box icon. Now this next one is not enabled by default, so make sure you enable it. When you use your turn signals, the camera turns on allowing you better visibility by using that camera to see. And now with the new update, you can actually move the location of the blind spot by holding that image. Something I really wish my Model X has. Now, this next setting isn't what you think of where lights blink or the car beeps when someone is in your blind spot. The car will make a beeping sound if you're super close to another car as you're switching lanes but it's not like Mercedes where if the car detects another car in that area, it will beep. The only real way to see if a car is in your blind spot is of course your mirrors, but if you look on your driving screen, if the lane and the car blink red is another way as well. Speed limit warning can display a notification on the lower left or chime if you go over a certain speed limit. And all these other safety features I do recommend turning on. Especially this super cool feature that was paid before but became free called green traffic light chime. This makes it so the car will chime when the signal light turns green which is super cool. And I recommend everyone turning it on. Now. Moving on to locks. Open your door from the inside, press the lock button. Manually open the front doors in an emergency, lift the handle above the mirror switches. And in the rears, you need to remove the rubber piece, remove the plastic cover and pull the wire. And on the new Model Ys, they have a red switch to open that cover. You can add new key cards, Tesla key rings and phones here. You can control the child lock, enable or disable window lock, as well as walk away door lock where the car locks automatically. 
and exclude home as well. If you have driver door lock mode enabled, only the driver door will open, which is good for safety. If you wanted to open all the doors, however, once you're inside, you can of course hold the interior driver door button, or you can press the lock button on the left side of the screen, or press the giant lock button above the car. Or what you can do shortly after going into park, Press the park button quickly one more time and it will automatically unlock all the doors. You can customize the car left open notifications you get on the app on your phone. Enable the lock confirmation sound which is a pleasant quiet horn and it's not obnoxious. And look here, if you have a new Tesla you're probably wondering what the heck how come I don't have closed windows unlocked? That's because due to recent regulations and safety they had to remove this feature on all the new Teslas. So now you can't automatically close your windows through the app or using the Tesla. The older cars still have it, but they're supposed to release a software update that removes it from all the older cars as well, which sucks. And if you have a MyQ garage or home link, you can control these settings as well. In the light section, you can control your headlights and fog lights. But again, if you press the left gear stock away from you or towards you, the quick menu pops up on the lower left hand corner allowing you to customize it as well. Ambient lights turn on the footlights. One cool easter egg that a lot of people don't know about is that the display brightness controls the brightness of the ambient lights as well. So if you wanted the ambient lights to be super bright, I have this on my Model X, but I just turn my display to dark mode and max the brightness 24 seven. One new feature that Tesla recently added is auto turn signals. This one is super cool. First, if you lightly press the gear stock up or down, it will normally click three times and turn off like most cars. However, once auto turn signal is enabled, it disables this feature and now the turn signals will always stay on or off. But now it will use the cameras to determine whether you have changed lanes and will turn off automatically. It works really well and does a great job. Auto high beams enable the high beams automatically if the cameras don't detect any cars. And the cool thing is with software updates, it's always getting better. Headlights after exit just means the headlights stay on for a short period of time for safety after you exit and turn off automatically. And don't worry, it won't drain your battery life or anything. The steering wheel lights are these super tiny arrows that light up in the dark in your steering wheel. Display allows you to customize the screen from light or dark mode or auto where it will switch to dark mode once it gets darker. Screen clean mode allows you to clean your screen if you have any smudges. And all these other settings are pretty self-explanatory. Just know any general settings like temperature and tire pressure you change in the car also reflects in your Tesla app immediately. Under trips, it's a little different than gas cars where it shows you your total miles and maybe miles driven. Current trip is the last drive you took and shows how far you drove as well as how much energy you consumed. You also see this show in trips card. This is a new slash old feature which I'll talk about in a second. Since last charge is basically how many miles and energy you consumed since the last charge session. Now, you'll see a few tabs in blue. This means they're customizable so you can rename it to whatever you want. First, I always recommend a lifetime or total energy tab so you can keep track of your energy and average watts per mile you consumed for the life of your vehicle. And for all you newbies out there, lower is always better. And lastly, because there is no real maintenance for the Tesla, you don't get any maintenance reminders. So for me, I changed one of my tabs to tire rotation every 6,000 miles so I can keep track of when I need to rotate my tires again. So talking about the trips card, that's this new menu Tesla added to the bottom left. They had it before in their old interface, but now they brought it back. To access it, if you don't see anything at the bottom, you'll see a little stack of cards with a music. Just press that and then the cards will open. Once you do that, your music tab will open, but you can scroll to the left or right. Like scrolling right gives you the odometer trip card and scrolling right again gives you the tire pressure. The only card you can expand is the music card, which is kind of confusing. You can swipe up and quickly change stations or sources as well as access the equalizer. But then you have that same info on the actual music section. So it's a little bit confusing. Now under navigation, here's where you can easily mute the navigation voice if she's a little annoying. But one cool Easter egg is if your girl is talking while on navigation, just like the music scroll wheel volume, you can lower and raise her volume on the fly. You just can't mute her with the scroll wheel. Once you sync your phone to your car, if you have calendar events, it can automatically navigate to that destination. Trip planner is a must as it calculates supercharging stops for you if you go somewhere. Again, online routing is still a hit or miss for me 
as I still prefer Google Maps. But I did find it does reroute you better if I decrease the save time. So I changed mine to two minutes. Avoid ferries, tolls, HOV lanes can be toggled here as well. However, you can also toggle these options on the fly during your navigation. While on navigation at the bottom, you'll see these three dots. You can press those three dots or just swipe up Go to settings and adjust all these settings on the fly. Speaking of navigation, you can now change your routes on the fly by pressing different routes. If you don't see any alternative routes, just press the giant square and it will give you an overview of your trip. In the navigation, if you have enhanced or full self driving, you'll see a blue steering wheel icon and that's the navigate on autopilot feature which changes lanes and enters and exits the freeway for you. If you wanted to add a stop, you can scroll up and add a stop. On the bottom right, you'll see where you're located currently. And on the right, you have the icons to change to satellite mode, which only works if you have a premium subscription. You also have the traffic tab, which again, only works if you have the premium subscription. The little map icon turns off point of interest as well. And the lightning bolt will show you all the superchargers in the area. Another Easter egg is if you wanted to quickly navigate to a saved work or home address, just swipe to the right or swipe down and it will quickly start the navigation. One way to quickly edit or delete your home or work address is just by going to navigate and holding the home or work icon. There you can set your work address or your home address or clear it as well. Now moving on to safety. This is where you'll find a lot of options like the sentry mode built in dash cam. I recommend turning on view live camera via mobile app, which allows you to view the exterior cameras on your phone if you have premium connectivity. And if you have dog mode enabled, it allows you to view the interior cabin as well, which is a super cool feature. Now, one thing to note, the dash cam on the Tesla is not like a normal dash cam on a normal car. It only saves video footage from the current drive, but once you drive again, it deletes the old footage. If you wanted to, you can save the last 15 minutes by pressing the dash cam button or honking the horn. And again, I'll talk about the black bar settings in a second, but one of the reasons why I like to keep the dash cam button shortcut on the black bottom menu screen is so if I needed to, I can quickly press it so it can record footage while driving. And all this footage will show once parked in your dash cam screen. Also, any accidents or sentry mode footage will always automatically be recorded. You also know your parking mode dash cam is enabled with the little red dot at the top of your screen. And you can also quickly disable or enable it. Pin to drive is also nice to enable if you're worried that someone will drive your car if you live in an unsafe area. We talked about this before, but cabin overheat protection will drain your battery if you leave it on and your car is parked outside and it's hot. So if you want some circulation, I do recommend turning this to no AC. Joe mode makes it so your chimes, alerts, your turn signal sound quieter. Now, parking brake. This one has confused me for the longest time because I always thought it was enabled by default. It just never showed the parking brake sign. Now, it does say parking brake is applied. When I press for park brake, it makes a sound as if it's actually engaging the parking brake. So to enable the parking brake, you can go here, press your foot on the brake, and press the parking brake is applied button. But another much easier way is to simply hold the right gray park button and this will also enable the parking brake. Now, power off isn't really what it seems. It pretty much means it turns the screen off for you if you're ever in the car, but it doesn't truly turn off the car. The only real way to turn off your car to allow your car to go into the deep sleep, recalibrate the batteries, and just kind of reset the system is to make sure you have things like sentry mode turned off. Then after 15 or 20 minutes, the car will go to sleep. Also, you know the car was asleep and then woke up, because when you check the app or try to open the charge port or unlock the doors, it takes a few seconds and you'll hear the car making a ton of noises and clicking sounds. I do highly recommend letting your car go into this deep sleep at least once a week because it's really good for the car's battery health. Now, next up is service. This is where your tire pressure is located. And now they added the feature where it shows your last known tire pressure and it also shows up in the app, which is super cool. I mean, if you haven't noticed, I keep saying Tesla added this feature, and that's the cool thing with Tesla, they're constantly adding new features. You can view your owner's manual on your car. Car wash mode is awesome if you take your car to an automated car wash. Touchless only, please. It does things like lock the charge port, disables the windshield wipers, 
It allows your car to freely roll without enabling the parking brake. Now I have a dedicated video on adjusting the headlights, so you could check that out. But you can also enable towing mode here. And if you change your wheels or tires, you can update that as well. They have all these features to provide you with the best range estimate as possible. Now, camera calibration is a great one that I've had to use a handful of times. Once when I was tinting my Model X roof and they removed all the camera plugs. Another time when it was super bumpy driving in Mammoth Lakes and it must have bumped the camera out of position for a second so I couldn't use my autopilot anymore. If you also have any issues with your driver's seat and steering wheel, you can calibrate those as well. Wiper service mode enables you to change your wiper blades. Under software, it shows you the type of test that you have as well as allows you to quickly change change your car color or the name of your Tesla. Now one new super secret feature they enabled is service mode. By holding on to the Model Y logo until it ripples, a menu appears to enter the access code, which is service. And in service mode, you can access various settings. You can even do a battery health check, which drains your battery while plugged in to check the battery health. And for any nerds out there, you can see all the other settings of your car. Now, one thing all Tesla owners want is the latest and greatest software through the software updates. However, sometimes you won't get it when Mr. Joe Schmo next door has all the latest updates. A lot of people don't know this, but if your car is new, your car is on a special factory firmware, which locks it from getting any new software updates for a few weeks. So even if everyone around you is getting the new software updates, you may not get it for a few weeks, but eventually you will get it. Also be aware that Tesla doesn't send updates to all cars at once. They always send it out in waves. After that, a few ways to allow your car to check for updates is to simply go to the software tab. And many times it will force a refresh so it updates the current time. Sometimes it works, however, sometimes it doesn't work and people still have no idea how to force an update or refresh for your software. Some people said changing it from standard to advanced multiple times makes it refresh. Some people said holding the advanced bunch makes a difference, but honestly, I found that it just does it on its own. You just have to be patient. Just keep it on advanced and you'll get the update eventually. And lastly, if there's any upgrades, you can purchase it through the upgrades tab. Okay, so we talked about the menu, we talked about the cards. Let's quickly talk about the little left-hand side icon. So this is the mini menu on the left. It's where you find all your up-to-date live features. When you use your turn signal, when you turn on the headlights, when you roll down the window, even the interior color shows up on this cartoon display in real time. When parked, you can quickly open the trunk, the frunk, the charge port, and lock the doors. In drive, you'll get your driving animations, objects, signal lights, and all that fun stuff. You can also zoom in while in drive and rotate the viewing angle. And it's something I really miss that isn't in the Model S and Model X. Now we got that section out of the way, let's quickly talk about the big black bar at the bottom. These are like your shortcuts and you can easily customize the middle buttons to whichever ones you want. On the far left, we have that car icon with the main menu. Next to it, you can easily customize the temperature, but you can easily adjust the the climate, the seat heaters, defrosters. And I'll do a separate voice commands video on this later, but you can actually quickly change the cabin temperature using the voice commands. You can say something like, my balls are cold, and it'll increase the temperature. My feet stink. You can also quickly adjust the temperature by putting your finger on the temperature and sliding it left and right. You can also hold the temperature to turn the climate control on or off. If you also wanted to change the temperature between the driver and passenger, all you have to do is press the split button. You do get some quick commands if you press arrows left or right, like defrosters and heated seats. And to view more settings, just press the temperature. Tesla recently added a new feature where even if you're on auto, you can still control the climate fan speed from low medium and high. On the climate control, you can also set a charge schedule, keep the climate on, enable dog mode, and also camp mode. You can also control the heated receipts and turn off all the heating features off with the press of a button. Now, if you're the only person in the car, the air will only come to you. However, I found when it's super hot, the fan speed was pretty mid. So you can simply just press the passenger dashboard and the air will come out from the passenger as well. Aside from that, your top four apps is usually fixed on the left and the most recently used app apps are on the right. However, you can easily customize everything and make it so you have top five apps that are fixed and one recently used app. 
However, you can never go more than a maximum of six apps. They took it away, but now they brought it back. You can now enable the heated seats to maintain and stay on the black screen. Now, all these other icons are pretty self-explanatory, but to find things like Netflix and Toy Box, which is a must. You can just click on toy box or theater. Just know with things like Spotify, you have to have a premium membership to use it. Also, if you wanted to clean up the music area, you can clean that up by pressing the equalizer. You can do that by going to the equalizer or by pressing the volume and the equalizer pops up here as well. From there, you can go to sources and enable things like karaoke, tune in, title, and all that fun stuff. Now in the new update, they also have Zoom meetings, but I think my test is too old for that, so it doesn't even have that app enabled. I do, however, have it on the Model X. But yeah, I mean, that's about it. It's a long video, but Tesla's awesome. They change all these features. I'm sure I'm gonna have to do this again in a few years. And they really make it fun whenever you're charging your car with all their fun games and Netflix and all that fun stuff. You guys stay to the end. Thanks so much. Hope this video helped you. I'm sure I missed a few things, but thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.